Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on Voyager by Diana Gabaldon, the third book in the Outlander series. Voyager is book three in Diana Gabaldon's thrilling Outlander series. Two decades have passed since Claire had to leave behind the love of her life, Jamie Frazier, and she went through the Standing Stones to return to her own time period. This whole time she thought Jamie dead, that he had died at the Battle of Culloden, but when Clara learns that Jamie may actually be alive, she is anxious to once more travel through the stones and reunite with the man she loves. Voyager takes Claire on a journey back to Scotland and through the wilds of the Caribbean, where she begins to unravel the mysteries of the past. So, before I do get going with this book review, uh, just a heads up, a warning if you will, there will be absolutely no spoilers for this third book in particular, but there may be some slight minor spoilers in regards to the first two books in the series. So yeah, if you are not caught up with the first two books, uh, you may not want to watch this review. So yeah, I'm just giving you guys a quick heads up because there may or may not be some minor uh, spoilers in there from the first two books. So where to begin, yeah guys, whew, this book, a big lengthy book as well, uh, uh, Diana Gabaldon, it's like she knocks out huge book after huge book, I don't know how she does it, <laughs> but yeah, uh, not gonna lie, you guys, this book is one of those books that you, you spend a pretty good portion of it being pretty frustrated and perhaps even disappointed because there is so much going on in this book okay and I do mean so much there is a lot of things going on and the whole time I kept thinking to myself what does any of this have to do with anything what does it have to do with the larger plot going on so yeah not gonna lie I spent a good portion of this book pretty just upset and disappointed and frustrated but the funny thing is by the time I got to perhaps the last 25% of the novel may maybe even less than that I'm not quite sure but either way by the time I got literally to the end of the novel it, all of a sudden it's like things turned around for me in some sort of weird way and all of a sudden I found myself going wow I love this book <laughs> because like I said, the entire novel, I'm just sitting and thinking to myself, what the hell is this? What does this character have to do with anything? Why are they even involved? And yet the way everything comes together by the end of this novel, you think to yourself, wow, Diana Gabaldon crafted a masterful novel because all of these plot points and characters and loose ends, just all of these little itty bitty details, they all come together quite brilliantly and geniusly by the end of this novel. So yeah, if you're like me, if you if you start this book and you start off like me and you're like oh my god I can't get through this novel please I guarantee make make it to the end okay I request of you please make it to the end of this novel because I think you won't be disappointed because I think for me originally I started this book and I was all about Jamie and Claire's story that's all I cared about and yeah you would have all these other random occurrences and I just didn't understand any of it and why it was even there so I'm here to tell you that the randomness is not just randomness it's all there for a reason and a purpose there is there is a technique to the madness if you will <laughs> and once again I just feel like I have to reiterate this Diana Gabaldon just she just crafts such a complex and unique story full of twists and turns and unique wild wacky characters and it's just also great by the very end. I wouldn't say that Voyager is anywhere near as good as Dragonfly and Amber for instance. Uh, I think Dragonfly and Amber is just always going to be one of my favorites of the entire series. So yeah I, I wouldn't put this book up there but this is still the, as the, the three books that I have read so far this is still amazing and in some ways Voyager is quite a different book compared to the first two books in the series and I'm not quite sure how to describe that <laughs> there's just a different sort of I don't know flow and feel to the book and 
the things that are going on and what the missions and the goals and the obstacles are. Just very different uh, experiences that Claire is going through in different locations. So yeah, the fact that this book does feel quite a bit different from the first two books, I, I don't think that's a bad thing by any, uh, by any means. I think that definitely is a good thing because it helps the series not feel so stale book after book, I suppose. And another issue that I thought I might have a wee bit of a problem with is the fact that about two decades go by in this novel. So yeah, literally jumping from book two to three, you guys, if, if you're not already aware of it, there's two decades in between these books. And yeah, I was, I was a little concerned, I'm not gonna lie, because I, I, you know, that's two decades that we're not really seeing. But have no fear though, those two decades that we do not see, they are definitely explored and there are flashbacks presented in this book, which I really appreciated. I'm really glad Diana Gabaldon in incorporated flashbacks, you know, to give us an idea what the past two decades have been like for Jamie and Claire during this big long separation between them. And yeah, also another concern of mine, since two decades have passed since the last time Jamie and Claire met, my next concern was, well, is the Jamie and Claire relationship, is it still going to be sexy and steamy and passionate? Am I still going to love these characters when they reunite with each other? And my quick answer to that, yes, things are still definitely sexy and steamy between Jamie and Claire. And also to help out with the time gap, uh, also familiar faces returning, which really, really helps, I think. I think familiar faces are, are always a good thing. <laughs> And I think I also really liked the change in location with this novel. Uh, a good portion of the novel does continue on in Scotland, obviously, but uh, I think a good majority of this novel is, you know, all in the Caribbean, the islands and stuff, and it kind of turns, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of turns into Outlander meets Pirates of the Caribbean, and it was kind of awesome. <laughs> So yeah, even though you do spend a lot of time at sea and at these various different islands, I did have my concerns about, oh my god, this will be very boring because there's only so much that can happen on a ship. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, a lot of craziness can happen on a ship. <laughs> And I think another issue that I had, and this may just be a personal one, I guess it just depends on how you feel about the characters of Roger and Brianna. And Roger and Brianna were both introduced throughout scattered little bits of uh, Dragonfly and Amber. And yeah, I had a, I, I was definitely pretty disappointed because I, I don't know, maybe I was just assuming a lot. I just was under the assumption Roger and Brianna would, would figure very heavily into this book and they pretty much only have about the same amount of page time as they do in Dragonfly and Amber unfortunately. And yeah for me personally I wanted to see more of Roger and Brianna but yeah I'm crossing my fingers that I get more of them in like the next couple books. And I think I wanted to see more of Brianna as well because I wanted to see that dynamic with the trio of, of uh, Brianna and uh, Claire and Jamie and it just felt kind of strange that she wasn't there. It almost felt like an excuse, a shallow excuse from Diana Gabaldon to keep Brianna away from her parents. That way her parents seem young and hip still when in fact they're not young anymore. They're like in their 40s in this novel and Bran is like in her 20s. So yeah, I, it just felt like a, a shallow lame excuse to make Jamie and Claire seem hip and cool and young still by keeping Brianna separated from them. Overall, I freaking love this third book, you guys. So many great things about it. Obviously, continue to love Jamie and Claire. I loved all of the familiar faces making their uh, random appearances. I loved all of the new characters as well. I love the change in location from Scotland to the Caribbean. And yeah, Diana Gabaldon, she has yet to fail me, you guys. She continues to impress me book after book. She manages to accomplish something in every single book, you know, something different. Uh, something different with these characters, something different with these locations. She always manages to accomplish something that that always throws me for a loop and, and surprises me in different sorts of ways. So yeah, you guys, have you guys read the third book in the Outlander series? I'm definitely dying to know your thoughts and opinions. Hopefully this review is as spoiler free as possible. It's kind of hard to talk about a third book in a series without accidentally putting little spoilers in there, but hopefully I didn't spoil anything for you guys. So yeah, in the comments below, have you guys read Voyager? What did you think about it? Do you plan on reading it sometime in the future? Just let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.